guys. How's everyone doing tonight? Well, I'm Tana, as you know, um, your host of Tana's News Network. So thank you for joining us. This is uh, my second go around at this, and we're having a lot of fun. And a lot of you asked me to keep doing this. So hopefully if my schedule allows. We're going to try to shoot for every Thursday night, having some uh, Hey Tana time. But really excited to share with you guys something that I have done for, I think, the past five years. And, and a lot of people know a lot of my personality, but some of you don't know a lot about me. Um, then maybe you know I'm a mom, maybe you know I'm a wife to Curtis Kurtz here in Iowa, the best meteorologist in, in actually our state. Let me, let's just be real. And so you might know me as a mom, you might know me as a wife, you may know me from The Apprentice, you may know me from Fear Factor, you may know me from coming to your organization to speak, or you might know me from the Donald Trump campaign. But wherever you know me, you might not know everything about me. So a lot of times when I meet people, they're very shocked to find out how competitive I am. And, and I am very competitive. So this is something, uh, and I also should share with you all that I've got my assistant Paul helping me. And Paul is going to be managing um, a lot of your questions because I want this to be interactive. So if you have a question, you know, or you have a comment, thought, type it out. And then uh, if I miss it, Paul will shoot it out at me. And so this is going to be quite fun and interactive. But getting back to what I love to do. So there's this contest. Um, it's actually worldwide, a celebrity stein holding competition. It originally became a, a stein holding competition in Germany, I believe, at the Oktoberfest. And I have been asked to participate in this for the past five years. And of the five years, I've won three of them. Uh, last year, I was really in the, in the running to win this thing, but I was disqualified because of the way I held it. Uh, so I have, look at this, I'm so excited to share this with y'all. So I don't drink this much beer, but so this thing is measured. Uh, there's a line that's actually one liter of beer. And I, along with I think 10 or 12 other women who are celebrities in our state are going to compete for uh, the title. Uh, like I said, I have had it and I love it and I want it back. So last year at the competition, the, I don't know, I guess he's the judge. He handed me the Stein and I figured he handed it to me the way I was supposed to hold it. So he handed it to me this way and I was off and, and, you know, we were clicking them down and boom, boom, boom. They're just dropping like flies. And it's me and the 26 year old heavyweight arm. Gee, she's like a heavyweight lifter. And, uh, she, all of a sudden somebody from the audience is like, Tana's holding it wrong. Tana's cheating. And I'm like, what? Not cheating? Oh, hell, I've done this thing longer than you've been alive. So the judge goes, Hey, Tana, I'm so sorry to tell you, but we're disqualified. What the heck? You handed it to me. So I'm not going to screw this up this year. So I'm doing it. It's Saturday and here's what I have to do. So I have to, um, can't lean over. I have to hold this time out in front of me. I should start the timer. Uh, I don't know Paul this too much to ask, but if you've got a timer nearby, I'd be curious to know, um, where I'm at, but I think I held this three minutes and 30 seconds last year when I, I could have still gone and she was about to tank, but they disqualified me. So right now I know I'm not even a minute in and it's starting to burn like heck. I'm not going to lie. Um, but the rules are this arm's got to be fully extended. Uh, you cannot drop a sip of this beer. Like if a, if a drop comes out, you're disqualified. And, um, you have to keep the arm somewhat straight and whatnot. And so this is for charity. And like right now I'm starting to shake like a, like a son of a gun. <laughs> I don't plan on doing this much longer with y'all because what I thought it would be fun is to fill it up with beer and to actually just drink a couple sips of it. But while I'm at it, um, Paul, do you have any idea if you have a timer on this? <laughs> if yeah. you do, I'll keep going. If you don't, I might just set her down. Well, you're, but, you're at a minute you, 12 so far, Tana, so keep going. Well, <laughs> yeah. What'd you say, a minute 12? Yeah. Ooh, okay, well, so I can I, I brood it out here. Tell me when I get to two, if you don't mind. So, really, it's a lot of people in the audience, you know, like all of my friends, my family comes. Like, right now, this is really burning the heck out of the deltoid. But um, am I at two at all, Paul? No. Well, I'll just, what? How close? <laughs> You're close. Another eight seconds, you'll be at two. I can do this. Um... Tell me when I've done this. <laughs> I don't want to drop this on my computer, but <laughs> wow. 
This wasn't what part of the weigh? plan, but how are we doing? How much does that weigh? Oh, God. Did I do two minutes at least? Yes. Oh, two, my two gosh. My deltoid is on. Let me just. <laughs> I guess you guys can't see that. I'm going to have a sip real quick. It. I don't usually drink on the job, but. Uh, do we have a beer sponsor yet, Paul? No, well, we're certainly working on it, apparently. But uh, uh, just so you know, you can say hi to Christy and Randall, Curtis. we got a bunch of people watching here. Perez, Bill oh, Pierce, fantastic. Travis. So uh, it's really cool. And we well, appreciate cool. well, them hitting the share button. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know how. I think he's like wave at them, say hey, invite them in. I don't know what it is, but thank you. I appreciate that. So this is really, really fun, and um, I hope that I get the title this year because I want to win. Uh, the, ch the money goes to uh, any charity that I choose, and this year um, I've chosen the Good Samaritan Food Pantry because it's getting close to Thanksgiving, and there's a lot of people worldwide but in my state that are hungry, and so I hope to take home the title, and then I want to keep winning. So watch this when you come back to me, Paul. How's that? <laughs> That's awesome. So, hey, while I got you guys, I know I'm not putting it on right. I know people are going to go, doesn't she know how to wear a hat? I really do, but I don't want to mess up my hair. Check this out. I would love for my fans and followers and friends that are watching to tell me, would you all be interested in the winning package? Uh, I didn't design this. I can't take the credit, but I have a, a great friend who did. So it's a, a backpack that is filled with a, a bracelet, a winning bracelet, the hat, this shirt, which I don't want to wear uh, to the competition because I usually dress in some sort of like Oktoberfest, you know, the Wiener Schwitz schnitzel gal, uh, like I'm from Germany, but I don't have a, an ounce of German in me. Um, anyways, so this packet is really, really cool because it comes with an actual like declaration of the, uh, it just comes with a lot of really cool things. And my friend Dane did it. And I was just curious if anybody out there would be interested in the winning package. Please leave a message about that in the comments because Dane is uh, wondering if he should get a loan to get this funded, to get this out for the MAGA team to see if you all would love it as much as I do. So anytime you wear this hat, it's just a con it's, it's just fun. So love to hear any thoughts on that. Did anybody comment on that, Paul? Because I'd be curious. You can unmute me now. Oh, I guess I am. <laughs> uh, it's a little soon because they just saw the, uh, they just saw the package there, so, but Kevin did say that he's never sick of winning. Well, who is? <laughs> I like it. I mean, it's fun. Should I keep the hat on for the show? Looks great. Okay. Well, why not? It's kind of fun. Well, then maybe I will pull it down. So anyways, um, that was, that's exciting and that's fun. And look, we don't want to let three and a half beers get cold, but it, it, it does weigh, um, it actually weighs three and a half pounds and it took three and a half beers. I wonder if that's a coincidence. And like I said, there's a line. So when we show up, they give us the stein. It's actually this stein. These are the ones that I've done. And it's filled for our beer. And then we walk out on stage and we just go. And and I have every intention of winning. And here we go again. Let's just start the clock and see if I can talk about my next subject for another two minutes. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, I have to practice. This thing is Saturday, and I'm going out of town with my husband on Friday, so there's not going to be much practicing. Um, but anyways, I wanted to um, I wanted to share my okay, – well, so we can go. We went from fun. Now we can go to serious, and then we can come back to fun. So let's talk about the Kavanaugh Circus that we – most of us experienced uh, today. If you didn't see it um, – you're probably having a much better day than those of us that did see it because I have been out of sorts since I came down to get ready to do the show. So um, it was a terrible, terrible display of, of, in my opinion, American civil, 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 no civility. Um, it was just, it was, it was disgraceful. I was so, so sad for both parties actually. Oh, it's starting to burn. Where are we at, Paul? <laughs> 45 seconds. Are you kidding me? Now I see why all these women drop like flies. This takes some guts. Sure takes your concentration off. Maybe I should stop, but this would show I don't quit, nor does Kavanaugh. If y'all saw his fight, oh boy, this is burning like a like a mother. <laughs> Where are we at? Uh, minute four. You're doing great. Four or forty. Minute four. 
Hey, push I'll tell through, you what. Push through. Not because I'm a quitter. <laughs> Not because I'm a quitter, but because this is in less than 48 hours, and I better take her easy. I'm starting to smoke myself here, and I don't want to lose the title because I'm here showing off for all of you guys. So <laughs> let's put that down. Um, back to Kavanaugh. So let's let's start from the let's start from the top. By no means do I want this this video, this live feed, to be about who's right and who's wrong. Because we could debate that till the cows come home. And and that's really not what I'm all about. What I'm about is just talking about what this did to her, what this did to him, and what this brought up in me. So let's talk about her first since she went first. Um like She's a she's a doctor. She's a PhD. So she's very, very smart. Smart people remember a lot. They have a, a better brain. They have a bigger brain. They they uh, retain information well. So she didn't get to where she is in life by forgetting details. So I just thought it was um, it was hard to watch. Um, I don't know if it's true or if it's false, but I'll tell you what, either she's a really great liar or he's a really great actor. OK, so let's just push that aside. What this brought up in me was something that um, was very un, un, unusual. Uh, so what it brought up was, so I was watching this, and I just recently shared with my husband of 18 years and my mom and dad, who've known me my whole life, they bore me, of course, and I just shared with them that I had a, a experience 35 years ago. Where, and I never told my mom and dad this. And so I was sharing with them some stuff because I'm writing a, a memoir. I'm writing a book about my life and uh, the important steps along the way and the experiences. And so, like I said, I never shared this with them. And so what I shared with them uh, and my husband was that 35 years ago at a car dealership that I worked at with my best friend, a man who worked there um, came up and from behind and put his erect male genitalia on my back and I remember you know I was I was 15 or 16 like I said here we go now I'm going to be Dr. Ford I don't remember how old I was I do remember where it happened I do remember where I was sitting I do remember the chair I was in I don't remember him I don't remember his name I don't remember if he was a salesman if he was a manager if he was in finance I don't know anything about it but I know what happened. So when it happened, immediately I said, this isn't right. Uh, this is danger. Get the hell out. And so I looked at him, picked myself up, grabbed my purse, and I walked out the door. I drove home. Uh, I called the workplace and I said, I quit. And they said, well, why do you quit? You were just here. And I said, you have a pervert working there. I told the manager, who was my boss, who the person was. And what about my business? And I told my best friend, because she got me the job, that I I quit because he did this to me. And and I never thought of telling my mom and dad because I, I handled it. And so um so I shared that with my mom and my dad. And instantly when my when my parents heard that, my mother was like, Well, did you not share that because you thought your dad would, you know, go nuts because my father's an Italian man and you don't mess with his babies especially as girls. And actually that didn't cross my mind. Um, I mean, it would have down the road if I would have given it much time, but what, what the immediate thought I had with that was, um, I was 15 or 16. I was always a woman of strength. Um, I always had my wits about me. I knew what was right from wrong and I knew when to get out in a dangerous situation. And I did that. So watching Dr. Ford's testimony today, I asked myself, was I the person that I am right now sitting here in front of all of you, the same person six, when I was 16 years old with the, the wherewithal to know, get out. I, I've never been a dramatic person. I've never wanted to create a bunch of drama. I didn't want to make my family worry. I didn't want to make my mom and dad um, call the police and get a, get a, lawsuit against them. I didn't want to sue the car dealership for putting a predator in there. I didn't want to go around and label myself as a person that's been sexually assaulted. Um, but if there's a doctor watching, she's going to see, she or she, she or she's going to say you were sexually assaulted. And, and maybe I was, or I was, I don't know, but I took it and didn't 
I didn't compartmentalize it to being something I was going to come back to because I felt like I handled it. So when I was sitting there, I thought, I want to be sure, because I am writing this book, that I actually did, in fact, tell my best friend. So I called my best friend today that I haven't talked to in 17 years. She was my best friend in high school. And I said, hey, I just want to ask you, did I tell you, I remember telling you about the guy at such and such Pontiac, da, 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 da. Do you remember me telling you about that guy that did this and that to me? And she said, yeah, I do. And I said, okay, I just wanted to make sure um, because I never told my parents that. And she was like, yeah, you know, do you, she goes, I would, I don't remember his name. Do you? And I go, don't remember his name. And I couldn't pick him out of a lineup. And so my point in sharing that with you all is, um, is it something that we can handle that, like, I guess if that's not my question, I guess my question is, I don't remember his name. So let's just say that somebody calls me up and says, I know who that guy is. Well, I, I don't, I don't remember him. I don't remember what he looked like. You'd think I remember what he'd smell like. So when I was hearing the testimony of her and the bedroom and the radio was on, I was thinking, I know that song that was playing on the radio. And I know how I got there and how I did, would not have gotten there or how I got home. So a lot of things were coming up in me. But the, the main thing was is um, I took my experience and that worked for me. So I don't know what's happening with Dr. Ford's testimony, but what I do know is what I witnessed with um, Judge Kavanaugh's experience today, and my heart broke for the man. Um, I do not know him. I do have a friend, a very good friend, one of my best friends. She knows him very well. She actually worked in the White House with him, and she said he is an honorable, great man who has a wonderful, loving, loving wife. They love each other. And uh, she couldn't say enough good about him. So that's a firsthand testimony of somebody that I respect and, and trust. And I witnessed what his family went through. And, and also Dr. Ford's family. You know, they're having a, a heck of a go of it, too. Um, but what I loved was he was not going to let this experience ruin his credibility, his character. Um, he, he fought for himself. And how many of us would just pack up and say, this is too much. Like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't deal with this. Like I'll cave in. Um, I'll give them what they want. I'll back out. You know, there was, there was plenty of other excellent candidates that, that would take this position and be so worthy of it and whatnot. But the bigger question that came to my mind is how many of us could handle this um, scrutiny if this was your marriage and this was your husband and or wife and these were the allegations against them would your marriage survive this and so i sat back and asked myself that hard question and i said if this were my husband could i trust that what he's telling me is true and that he didn't do this to this woman and he didn't uh, sexually assault her and Fortunately for me, I can say I, I would trust my husband because my marriage has been nothing but based on trust and love um, and knowing a lot about our history. Now, I just shared with you all that I just shared with him a week ago that that, that experience happened to me uh, when I was 15. I didn't think it was worthy of bringing up into my Rolodex of him needing to know that because I don't think that's a part of me. And anyways, so uh, I was curious if y'all could just throw out in the comments, could your marriage survive this? Because I spoke to a lot of ladies and they said, absolutely not. If my husband was accused of this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe him for a split second. I had numerous men say that if they were in this situation, their wives would have left them. Uh, but I come back to, you know, we live in the United States of America, aren't you? Innocent until proven guilty. It's like the whole world believes this man's a predator and he's got to clear his name. So I don't know what's going to come of all of this. And I just pray for his family. I pray for her family because whether she is the best actress in the world, whether she is getting paid, um, you know, to do this, I don't know. That's not my, I'm not the judge and that's not what I'm about. But I just hope that all the parties involved can find peace and, and can move on from this because this is a horrible display of, of the American dream, in my opinion.
Yes. We've got a bunch of comments, and one of the great comments that just came through from Curtis was that uh, he said that his wife would know the truth without him saying anything, and there's a lot of truth to that for sure. That is, that's very true. That's a really, really good point, Curtis. Um, and a lot of men, you know, and you know, I'm, is, is this my friend Curtis DeGrove? Yes. Okay. A lot of people would be like, wait, that's her husband. He's upstairs. Uh, no, actually. So I know Curtis and he is a man of good character. And that's great that you have that kind of a marriage that your wife would know, just like I have that kind of a marriage that I would know without a doubt um, that my husband didn't do that because that's just not in his makeup and his nature. So great for you. And thank you for sharing that because I'm sure there's a lot of people that that wouldn't have the same experience. Absolutely. And uh, Danielle, thank you for your honesty and your insight. Hey, yes. Well, I appreciate that that you, um, you know, feel that this is helpful because at the end of the day, folks, why I want to why I want to do these experiences and, and be on the news network with you all here at TNN is just to to communicate and provide value. So I never in a million years thought I'd ever bring that story up. But today it just something in there. I was like, you know, 35 years ago, I couldn't tell you his name. And if somebody said, I'll give you $150,000 to say it's him. No, no, I was there. It happened to me. I don't know. 35 years ago. I mean, that's why I'm saying, you know, she's a doctor. She's a smart woman. Um, she, she probably remembers a little bit more than I do, but I, I don't remember any of the details or the specifics. And I would never, ever, want to throw, I, I don't even want to say the name of the dealership for the fact that, you know, I could bankrupt somebody. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for people to not buy their cars from this dealership. I'm looking for um, people to take their lessons, share them, and maybe somebody out there has had an experience like similar to mine and can go, whoa, great, you know, always thought because my girlfriend's told me I should, you know, make a big deal and put it on, um, you know, put it under the neon lights that this happened to me and then be a victim all my life. Well, Tana, just prove that you don't need to be. No, you don't. You don't. If, if you know, you're not hurt by it. I wasn't hurt by it. So um, anyways, well, if we don't have any other comments on uh, that subject, I'd like to move on to my most recent client. Well, we got a bunch of comments. I'd love to go through them with you. Well, what do they say? Anything that we could chat about? Absolutely. Oh, well something about a nice hat oh dane i bet he loves it that's dane that i was telling you about dane i was asking if people wanted to pick up the winning package and i bet they do so dane's hoping to bring me out to california next week for uh, a wonderful event so maybe he can put in the comments of the event and all the specifics and i think he's working on getting me a sponsor for that so he can say if he has done that or not um, but moving on, I wanted to also say, because I teased in my um, my caption a couple days ago, that I wanted to start using the hashtag U2, Y-O-U-T-O-O, -O, just because when I started reading some of the emails that were coming in and seeing what was happening with um, Judge Kavanaugh, I started realizing this could happen to you too, or me too. So I don't know, some people started liking it. If you like it, I have a, a great friend of mine who um, sends me emails all the time and he thought that America should start using the hashtag you too and I told him that I agreed with him so I wanted to share that with you all but um, we should move on you think we it's okay Paul if I go another five ten minutes and talk about Dr. Ross absolutely and just uh, to recap some comments there that Travis and Christy uh, and Dennis both said that their their marriage was would, would Stand, you know, everybody would stand by each other uh, because the, the marriages would, the marriages could survive it for sure. Well, That's good. I just started thinking this would be a crime, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's call this I bet I'll be jealous, but that's going to go to waste. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to pour it down the drain, and that's kind of a waste of beer. Um, but anyways, getting back to my most recent client. So this is a really interesting story. I was in uh, California recently for um, a wonderful project that I'm working on. And I met a guy, we went to this, this wonderful establishment called Duke's um, in Malibu, right on PCH, I think it was. But anyways, I didn't drive. But a uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful restaurant and a bar and the waves just crash right up on the rocks. And so there was no tables in the place. Um, and there was four of us. 
And so I spot, of course, the good looking guy sitting alone. And I'm like, oh, I got to go. I, we got to go get his. He's not going to sit at an eight top alone. Like, who does that? And so I was heading over in that direction to ask him if we can share his seat. And my phone rang. So I had to take the call. And fortunately, my buddy Marco was with me. I believe it was Marco. He went over and asked if we could join him. And the guy said, sure. So we plopped down and have a wonderful time and uh, had an amazing Mai Tai and had an amazing little nibbles. And we get to chit-chatting. And uh, we talk about, you know, who I am, what I'm doing. And um, he shares with me. I told him I was on The Apprentice. Cause I think he's like, I remember you or something. You look familiar. You live here. And I'm like, actually no. And so we share my experience. And he's like, well, that's interesting because I'm thinking about going on a reality TV show. And I said, really, what's the premise? You know, like shark tank, what, and you know, thinking it's going to be something similar to my show business oriented. And he's like, no, it's actually a dating show. And I'm like, really? And I looked at him and I, I go, what do you do for a living? And he goes, I'm a, I'm a doctor. And I'm like, you're a doctor. Like my initial thing is you're a doctor and you can't get a girlfriend. And I might've said that cause you guys know who I am. I'll say anything. And so I said, um, really? And I said, how old are you? And he said, I'm 40. And I said, well, why would you want to go on? Why would you want to go on a reality TV show? And he's like, well, I don't know. I'm having a hard time. Um, finding anybody and and I'm having a hard time like I don't know I just think it'd be fun what was your experience and I said well I actually uh, coach people that want to get on get on reality tv and actually I have a really good success rate I've coached some people uh to get on shark tank I've coached somebody for the undercover boss and actually she made it on the show and she was a star and she was phenomenal and I mean I, I'm really good at this so I said I'll tell you what I would love to talk to you about it here's my business card. Give me a call. And so he does. And I, so I, I spend some time with him and I just said, here's the deal. You're a good looking guy. You're an emergency room doctor. You're 40 years old. Um, if I were to watch the show and see you on the big screen, I'm going to say that is a desperate man who obviously has got some problems or some issues and he can't get a date. So ladies watching this right now, I'd love for your feedback on this because I want to see whether I gave him good advice or not. So, um, so anyways, he's like, well, it'd be so fun. And I said, it would be, but what about after like, okay, so what's the premise? So it's kind of like the bachelor where it's one chick and maybe let's say 10 guys and she's got to love you and she's got to pick you and, and you know, you got to make it through all this and that. But, but we don't know, like, I don't know who the producer is cause I haven't, found out yet but is this a reputable person is this could they be making a joke of you could they roll out some woman who is nothing like what you would want you know i mean reality tv has changed a lot since i was on it and so we don't really know like could they make a joke of you and so he's like well you're bringing up so many good points and i said well are you dating anybody now and he's like well i have a gal that i kind of like and i said well oh you're gonna blow that man for what a little shot at fame and he's like well it's not even like I want to be famous I just thought it'd be cool and I said and it is if you don't do something wrong don't say something wrong don't act like uh, a gen you know we all have generalizations of what a doctor is uh, you know you may slip and you may show something and then the world's like see he's just like and then I gave him some examples which I wouldn't want to say on a live feed like this in case somebody would take offense but so I just shared with him my thoughts I said I wouldn't do it I wouldn't do it. I said, reality TV changed my life for the better. Uh, but my show had a good business concept. Uh, my show highlighted my strengths. You are a successful man. You went to a great school. You went to medical school. You're an emergency room doctor at a prestigious hospital down the road. Like, you are good looking. You're built. Like, you don't need this. It's not worth, it's not worth the risk. And so I said, in the, in the gal that you're dating, like, forget about it. If you go on a reality TV show that's a dating premise and concept, you're going to lose her. Do you like her at all? And he's like, hey, I do. And I said, I'd be careful. I said, I would not do it, and I would highly advise against it. So do we have anybody out there that has a take on that? Because I felt like um, – that this doctor did not need uh, to add this to his resume because, I mean, he's a doctor. Right, ladies? Got any 40-year-olds out there? 
I thought I could go for a 30 year old. Yeah, actually, uh, Tana, not so many so far on this commenting on this one, but it is an interesting take. So uh, what, like the, the 90 day fiance on TLC, how about that show? So they had, Oh, I haven't seen that one. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> 90 days of visitors visas so they decide whether they want to get married or not and it's it's uh there's some interesting folks on there well and you know and that's the thing that's great if if you've tried every angle um and you're desperate for love and you you know don't have a lot going on and you know i said how how would your employer let you be gone for you have to be gone for a while i mean i was gone for a long time on the apprentice and he said that um his employer would let him go so i hope he makes the right decision i'm going to be speaking with him probably in the next day or so and he's going to confirm um if he took my advice or not actually you know it's so interesting i'll give i'll give it another minute but um I, so i have been approached by the show below deck i don't know if any of you are familiar with that show but i have, happen to really like it and below deck is um, a beautiful yacht like a like 10 20 million dollar yacht i don't know the actual number they told me years ago and you go on the boat with maybe five six of your good friends and you want they wine and dine you you eat lobster you have champagne dom perignon cristal whatever you want you jet ski you fly helicopters whatever you want to do and um and they take such great care of you but they talk about the show's concept is what happens down below below deck while you're all up there eating you know high on the hog and drinking and having a good old time acting like a bunch of rich people what's happening down below who's sleeping with who well the producer of the show called me and asked me if i'd want to go on it and i was like well who the hell wouldn't i mean yes I'd love to go on that show and so i was actually gonna go with a, a client of mine at the time and i was gonna check in with like my sister some of my um some of my close friends who are classy and who do like the nicer things in life especially boating and you know like my sister and her best friend and she's my good friend we love to lay out and we love water sports and so like those those were two of them um but i just thought you know i didn't i didn't go on it Okay, but I sat there and I went, I got an idea for you, do doctor. How about this? You want to go on a reality TV show? What about I get you on Below Deck? What about you go on a show where you look like a man of high value and you build your credibility up to, hey, guess what? I said, bring your sister, bring your mother. You look like a great, a great man, you know, and I have, I can construe, construe all that for him. If in fact he wants to go, I go, you bring your best, you bring your favorite life coach and I'll come aboard and we'll have a real good time. And I said, I'll bet you 20 bucks. You'll have uh, women calling you left and right and hitting you up on Instagram wanting to date you. Now, that's a different concept than going on a show where you appear to be desperate and you're going to be in the slaughter with, you know, 10 other men that want the same thing. Like, a, like you know, I just, anyways. So I'm excited to see what comes of it. But it was really fun. And that's what I like about my job is you just never know who the next client's going to be. You never know what the subject matter is going to be. And you never know how you're going to help somebody and their future life. So, and their possible future wife. So, um, anyways, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Hey, Paul, any more questions? We'll we go did. out with Fang. I've got to okay, see how many seconds you can do on that one, right? Let me start the, the watch thing. <laughs> what? Well, you got to start this one. I lifted. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Well, I didn't know you um, So, uh, Cheryl said that he shouldn't do the show. Good. Agreed. And, Thank you. And uh, a lot of people watch Below Deck, actually. is quite, quite, quite of amazing. So. Uh, on Bravo. Uh, hey, y'all be looking for me soon because I'm going to work my magic and try to get get him on that show with myself. And I mean, he was young, you know. Oh, hey, let's get some hot doctor friends. No offense, sweetheart. Um, you know, some hot doctors, but it's got to be mostly girls because if we throw if I throw him out with a bunch of girls, uh, all the other girls are going to want him. And he looked good. I mean, he had on nice clothes. He was built. Like I said, um, I'm not looking. I'm just saying. Um, uh, it's not hurting yet, so I know we haven't gotten to one minute. I okay. pray we have, but now it's starting to. <laughs> That's good. So Kevin said that reality shows are a good way to highlight your strengths, not your weaknesses. Reality shows are if they aren't uh, a dumb one. And, you know, like like if you have a weakness, if you have, I agree with them, but let's just say it's a dating show and yeah, there's a lot of drinking 
and there are, there is how long we've we been going because this is now starting to blow up my back oh we're doing good uh, we're at a minute 15. 15. i'll go to a minute 30 and then i'll put it down oh, girl. um yeah but if you do something stupid like drink or okay i'm gonna take it down oh boy. i said i wasn't gonna do that again <laughs> dang um boy that really rips it up though Woo! Yeah, that's a good exercise for you. There you go. So, uh, Curtis says he has a friend on Below Deck. And he does? So he does. So you need to talk to Curtis about that. Okay. Well, what was I going to say about, um, I was saying something about Below Deck going there with a bunch of doctors. No, I, I think I moved off on that one. I can't remember what I was going to say about You were pushing below... an idea for a reality show with, with, with the uh, Don't Be Desperate. So... So well, I, we need to remind uh, folks to share the uh, broadcast today, especially the folks that came in late. They can go back and watch it again, of course, and it's uh, be on a repeat and to make sure that they go to HeyTana.com and the hashtags above your head. Hey, yes. So if I didn't hear you correctly, Paul, I think I heard you say, but what if you didn't say it, this is what I was going to say. For all you watching right now, if you could share the video, is that what you said, Paul? It is. That's one of the things. Okay, yeah. So if you don't mind sharing it, I'd appreciate that so we can get some more love going and, and share things around. That would be awesome. And then if you're not following me on Instagram, that would be a fun place to follow me for a different uh, different vibe. Um, but we're going to try to do this every Thursday night, like I said, if it doesn't conflict with our schedule. But we love having you here, and this is super fun. And um, I hope you guys all take took some value in our conversations and that is you know we're fighting too much i try never to fight with you know people know that i'm a, a very conservative republican woman i'm not trying to change your opinion because i got my guy in the white house um but i do believe that we need as americans we need to start loving more and start pushing aside our differences and just tolerating people more because it's a crazy world we're living in now and with the hashtag you too that i mentioned earlier y-o-u-t-o-o -O, uh strange things and bad things uh like what happened to brett kavanaugh and uh you know, Dr. Ford and the crazy things that are happening to her family and the threats uh, could happen to you, too. And like I said, I don't know what I I know. I know what I did 35 years ago. I don't know what other people specifics 35 years ago. But my point is, is anything could happen to you, too. So let's try to love more and let's push aside our differences and try to make this a better world, because at the end of the day, we don't know how long we're here for. So don't you want your legacy to be one of love and kindness rather than hatred? And if somebody were to scroll through your Facebook feed or your Twitter feed or your Instagram feed, would they want to see love and unicorns and butterflies and and beer? Or would they want to see, you know, devil signs and hatred and, and FUs and, and all that hatred? I mean, we can win in different ways. Um, so anyways, that's that's what I have to say, and I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for the love, and once again, share the video if you liked it, and um, have a wonderful evening. Until next week, bye-bye. Hey, Tana, we got one more thing, too. Sure. Who, who would they like to have on as a guest so we can have on? Uh, uh, that's a great idea. Guests? I'd love to have Diamond and Silk on. I think they'd be fun. I think Sean Hannity would be a hoot. So, um, Diamond and Silk, they're my friends. So maybe I reach out to them and ask them if they come on and, and we can talk about something that would be a little bit more fun. They're great gals and, uh, we don't have to maybe be so serious. So post below, whoever's watching still post below who you'd like to have on as Tana's guest. Yes. Could be anything from, oh, well. I don't want to say names. I mean, it could be anybody. But like I said, if you if you have a special person that you know I'm connected to, with the exception of President Trump, I probably can't get him on anytime soon. He's busy uh, making America great again. But yes, let me know if you're interested in um, a certain section. You know, if you're into yoga, what like I am, or you're into health and wellness and fitness like I am, and you would like something like that, let me know because I'd love to make this a little more interactive and we can. Um, I can have a guest right here in studio. All right, Tana, well, thank we're you. gonna cut it off and uh, you can have the last word. Thank you guys so much and you go out and make yourselves uh, have yourselves a wonderful evening and go make yourself unforgettable. Take care.